And as I began to travel around with the drum and learn, I learned that Native people have many prophecies about this time. I began to hear these <laughs> over and over. And so I kind of more or less memorized a lot of them. And what I'd like to do now is share with you some of those. Say at the beginning of each cycle of time, the Great Spirit comes down through a messenger. He makes a strong appearance upon the earth. And we are coming to an end of a cycle now. It's not the first cycle. There was a cycle of spirit. There was a cycle of the mineral, the rock. There was a cycle of the plant. And now we're in the cycle of the animal, coming to the end of that and beginning the cycle of the human being. When we get into the cycle of the human being, the highest and greatest powers that we have will be released to us and be released from that light or soul that we carry to the mind. But right now we're coming to the end of the animal cycle when we have investigated ourselves and learned what it is to be like an animal on this earth. And at the beginning of this cycle of time, long ago the great spirit came down and he made an appearance. He gathered the peoples of the earth together, they say on an island that is now beneath the water. And he said to the human beings, he said, I'm going to send you to four directions and over time I'm going to change you to four colors. But I'm going to give you some teachings and you will call these the original teachings. And when you come back together with each other, you will share these so that you can live and have peace on earth and a great civilization will come about. And he said, during this cycle of time, I'm going to give each of you two stone tablets. And he said, when I give you those stone tablets, don't cast them upon the ground. Because if any of the brothers and sisters of the four directions and the four colors cast their stone tablets on the ground, not only will the human beings have a hard time, but almost the earth itself would die. And so he gave us each a responsibility, and we call that the guardianship. And to the Indian people, the red people, he gave the guardianship of the earth. And we were to learn during this cycle of time the teachings of the earth and the plants that grow from the earth and the foods that you can eat and the herbs that are healing. So that when we came back together with the other brothers and sisters, we could share this knowledge with them because something good was to happen on the earth. And to the south, he gave the yellow race of people the guardianship of the wind. And they were to learn about the sky and breathing and how to take that within ourselves for spiritual advancement. And they were to share that with us in this time. And to the west, with his blackness of night, he gave the black race of people the guardianship of the water. And they were to learn the teachings of the water, which is the chief of the elements. It is the most humble and also the most powerful. When I went to the University of Washington and learned that it was a black man that invented blood plasma, it didn't surprise me because blood is water. And the elders already told me that black people would bring the teachings of water to humanity. And to the north, where there's white snow on this continent, he gave the white race of people the guardianship of the fire. And if you look at the center of many of the things they do, you will find the fire in this light bulb. They say that is a white man's fire. If you look at the center of a car, you will find a spark. If you look at the center of the airplane, the train, you will find the fire. And the fire moves, also consumes. This is why it was the white brothers and sisters that begin to move upon the face of the earth and reunite us as a human family. Because they had the guardianship of the fire, this was their responsibility. And so a long time passed, and the Great Spirit gave each of the four races two stone tablets. Ours are kept at the Hopi Reservation in Arizona at Four Corners area on 3rd Mesa. I've talked to people from the black race of people. Their stone tablets are at the foot of Mount Kenya. They are kept by the Kikuyu tribe. I once had the honor of presenting a sacred pipe of the Kikuyu tribe carved from the red pipe stone of Mount Kenya. One time I was at an at a, a Indian spiritual gathering about 15 years ago and a, a medicine man from South Dakota put a beaded medicine wheel in the middle of the gathering and it had the four colors and the four directions and he asked the people where is this from and they said oh probably Montana, South Dakota, maybe Saskatchewan. He said this is from Kenya. It was beaded just like ours, same colors. The stone tablets of the yellow race of people are kept by the Tibetans in Tibet and the guardians of the traditions of the people of Europe are the Swiss. 
in Switzerland, they still have the mask a day when each family brings out its mask. They still know the colors of their families. They still know their symbols, some of them. So we went through the cycle of time. Each of the four races went to their directions and they learned their teachings. It was in Newsweek magazine not too long ago that eight out of 10 foods that people eat on the earth were developed here in the Western Hemisphere because that was our guardianship to learn the teachings of the earth and the things that grow from the earth. And we were given a sacred handshake to show when we came back together as brothers and sisters that we remembered the teachings. And we were, it was indicated on the stone tablets that the Hopis have that the first brothers and sisters that would come back to them would come as turtles across the land. They would be human beings, but they would come as turtles. So when the time came close, the Hopis built a special village to welcome the turtles that would come across the land, and they got up in the morning and looked out at sunrise, and they seen, they looked out across the desert, and they saw the Spanish conquistadores coming covered in armor like turtles across the land, so this was then. So they went out to the Spanish man, and they extended their hand, hoping for the handshake, but into the hand, the Spanish man dropped a trinket. And so word spread throughout North America that it was going to be a hard time, that maybe some of the brothers and sisters had forgot the sacredness of all things, and all the human beings were going to suffer for this on the earth. So tribes began to send people to the mountains to have visions, to try to figure out how they could survive. At that time, there was 100,000 cities in the Mississippi Valley alone called the Mound Civilization, cities built on great mounds. Those mounds are still there. If you ever drive through Ohio or the Mississippi Valley, they are tourist attractions now. There was 100,000 cities of native people, and they were wondering how they could survive. And they began to try to learn to live off the land because they knew a hard time was going to come. They began to send people to have visions to see how we could survive this time. People came on the East Coast and they went across this land to the east and we were told in the prophecies that we should try to remind all the people that would come here of the sacredness of all things. And if we could do that, there would be peace on earth. But if we did not do that, when the roads went clear from east to west, and when the other races or colors of the earth had walked clear across this land, if by that time we had not come together as a human family, the Great Spirit would grab the earth with his hand and shake it. And so if you read the treaty negotiations from Red Jacket of the Six Nations on the east coast of this land, clear to Chief Joseph and Chief Seattle on the west coast of this land, they all said the same thing. Chief Joseph said, I, I accord you the right and I hope that you accord me the right to live in this land. We always were trying to live together. But instead of living together, you all know there was separation, there was segregation. They separated the races, they separated the, the Indians, and they separated the blacks. In the state of Washington, it was against the law for an Asian to marry a white person. Up until not too long ago, there was separation. So when they got to the west coast of this land, the elders that were aware of many of these prophecies, and I should say that I know that each of every one of you from your tribal backgrounds have your own prophecies, and I'm probably not the most deserving person to be speaking, but and there is going to be a time, I think, on the agenda for other people to share, and I hope that you open up and do share. They, when they got to the west coast of this land, they said they would then begin to build a black ribbon, and on this black ribbon they would move a bug. And when you begin to see this bug moving on the land, that was a sign for the first shaking of the earth. And this first shaking of the earth would be so violent that this bug would be shaken off the earth into the air, and it would begin to move and fly in the air. And by the end of this shaking, this bug would be in the air around the world. And behind it would be a trail of dirt. And eventually, the whole sky of the entire earth would become dirty from these trails of dirt. And this would cause many diseases that would get more and more complicated. So the bug moving on the land, of course, it's easy to see now. In 1908, the Model T Ford was mass produced for the first time. So the elders knew the first shaking of the earth was about to come about. That's the First World War. In the First World War, the airplane came into wide usage for the first time. That was the bug moving into the sky. And so then they knew that something very important would happen. 
there would be an attempt to make peace on earth on the west coast of this land and so the elders begin to watch for this and they begin to hear that there was going to be a league of nations in san francisco so the elders gathered in arizona around 1920 or so and they wrote a letter to woodrow wilson and they asked if indian people could be included in the league of nations at that time the united states supreme court had held that a reservation is a separate and semi-sovereign nation not a part of the united states but protected by it and this was a concern because people didn't want the reservations to become more and more separate they didn't want them to be considered nations so they did not write back and the native people were left out of the league of nations so that circle was incomplete in the league of nations circle there was a southern door the yellow people there was the western door the black people there was the northern door the white people but the eastern door was not attended and the elders knew that peace would not come on earth until the circle of humanity is complete until all the four colors set in the circle and share their teachings then peace will come on earth so they knew things would happen things would speed up a little bit there would be a cobweb built around the earth and people would talk across this cobweb when this talking cobweb the telephone was built around the earth a sign of life would appear in the east but it would tilt and bring death it would come with the sun but the sun itself would rise one day not in the east but in the west so the elders said when you see the sun rising in the west and you see the sign of life reversed and tilted in the east you know that the great death is to come upon the earth and now the great spirit will grab the earth again with his hand and shake it and this shaking will be worse than the first so the sign of life reversed and tilted they called that the swastika and the sun rising in the west was the rising sun of japan these two symbols are carved in stone in arizona when the elders seen these two flags these were the signs that the earth was to be shaken again and the worst misuse of the guardianship of fire is called the gourd of ashes they said a gourd of ashes will fall from the air it will make the people like blades of grass and prairie fire and things will not grow for many seasons i saw on tv not too long ago they were talking about the atomic bomb the gourd of ashes they said it was the best kept secret in the history of the united states the elders wanted to speak about it in 1920 at the league of nations they would have spoken of it and foretold its coming if they could have entered into the league of nations so they knew that after the second shaking of the earth and they saw the gourd of ashes fall from the sky they knew then they would be trying to make peace on the other side of this land and because the peace attempt on the west coast had failed they would build a special house on the east coast of this turtle island north america and all the nations and the peoples would come to this house and it would be called the house of micah it would shine like the micah on the desert shines so the elders begin to see they were building the united nations made out of glass that reflects like the micah on the desert so they knew this is the house of micah and all the peoples of the earth should go to it so they met and talked about this they said that in 1920s they had written and they had not been responded to so this time they said we better go to the front door of the house of micah because things might get a lot worse so elders representing a number of tribes i believe drove to new york city when the united nations opened they went to the front door of the house of micah and they said these words we represent the indigenous people of north america and we wish to address the nations of the earth and they said we're going to give you four days to consider whether or not we will be allowed to speak and they retreated to one of the six nations reserves in new york state the six nations reserves are the keepers of the great ma of peace of the prophet that appeared here in north america the ganawida and this great law of peace is still recited it takes four days between sunrise and noon each year in indian by memory it's recited about this time of year four days later they came back i believe the nations of the earth 
they heard that the Indians had come to the door and they voted to let the Indians in. They wanted to hear what they had to say. But the United, Nation, the United States is one of five nations and the United Nations with a veto power and still they were concerned because this time the native sovereignty was even stronger. And I believe they vetoed the entrance of the native people. So then they knew other things would happen on the earth and the United Nations would not bring peace on earth but there would be continuing and deepening confusion and that the little wars would get worse. So they retreated to the Six Nations Reserve and they talked about this and they said the time is really getting close now, 1949. They said we're going to divide the United States into four sections and each year we're going to have a gathering and we're going to call these the White Roots of Peace Gatherings. They begin to have these around 1950. And they authorized certain men to speak in English for the first time about these prophecies. One that I used to listen to many times over and over was Thomas Benyaka. He was a Hopi, he is a Hopi man, I believe he's still living, who was authorized to speak in English about what was on the stone tablets. And he spent his lifetime, has dedicated his lifetime to doing this. But we're in that time now. We're between the first light of a new day and the sunrise. The sunrise is about to come. When it comes up, everyone is going to see it. But you know how it is in the village. There's a few people that get up early. And there's some that sleep till noon. I'm probably one of those that sleeps till noon. <laughs> the Hopis and their prophecies say there will be a religion that comes here. Maybe it will be true and bring unity. Or maybe it will not bring unity. If it does not bring unity, a second religion will come. And the people of this religion are known in the Hopi language as the Bahani, the people of Baha. Ni means people of. So I was looking for the people of Baha. I wondered who the people of Baha were. I was a Baha'i quite a while for somebody told me that Baha'i means people of Baha. I thought, oh my God. Well, I was looking for it all these years and I never even noticed it. And I found it. I was stubborn, didn't want to become a Baha'i, but my grandfather that passed away, you know, he must have found out about it in the next realm because he came back to me four times. Tell me, hey, look at that again, look at that again. Look one more time. Baha, it means light or glory. Baha'i means followers of the light. They're the people of Baha. We've been waiting for these people a long time. They say they will bring a teaching that will unite the earth. So we need to share this teaching. They say the fire will come from the north. So here we are in the circle in the north, talking about the Bahanis, the people of Baha and the teachings of Baha'u'llah. When I heard about these, none of them made any sense. But now it has, most of it has come to pass. So in closing, I would like to call on each and every person, regardless of who you are, young or old, native or non-native, to arise now and to awake, to embrace this time, to learn everything you can about the teachings and the writings, to arise and awake and go forth, all the peoples of the earth, you're going to find them, peoples everywhere are now receptive to the message. This year is a year when that is really going to start, I believe, myself. Arise and awake. That's a phrase from the Dhammapada of Buddha. It is time to arise and awake, go forth and teach, walk the road. We call it the good red road, the road that runs north to south. The things will be lost from south to north, but come back from north to south. There's people out there waiting to hear, waiting to hear.